Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. In Deacon's garret, Finn and Deacon observed Sheila munching down pizza. Finn explosively advised Deacon to take Sheila to the sanitarium to get fluids, but Deacon said she did not want to go. God, I miss that woman, Deacon uttered. The lately poured Sheila replied that she would miss him and Finn, and she was dehydrated, not deaf. She could hear them talking about her. Finn said that he and Deacon just wanted Sheila to be okay. She assured Finn that she was okay because she was with her two favorite men in the world. She thanked them for delivering her and said she had not known how much longer she'd have lasted. Deacon replied that she was alive and that was the most important thing. Finn took Sheila's palpitation and asked how she felt mentally, physically, and emotionally. Sheila reported that she was really weak. Finn brought up the sanitarium again, but she believed she would get more important briskly at home with Cleric. Cleric brought Sheila hydrating fruit and asked what had happened to her. Sugar happed, Sheila said, groveling. Sheila asked how Deacon and Finn had known about sugar. Deacon explained that Lauren had told him. Finn wondered how Sugar had done what she would done. Sheila stated that she would been slipping out to see someone from her history. She'd been getting textbook dispatches and should have ignored them. Sheila had gone to meet up with Sugar many times, but Sugar had no showed. Sheila went on to say that while she had been running errands several weeks latterly, Sugar had kidnapped Sheila, taken her to the storehouse, and chained her up. Sheila had no way been so hysterical, seeing Sugar and the rage in her eyes. Sugar had just gotten out of captivity and had been staying for that day. Sugar had been imagining and planning her vengeance. Sheila had a flashback of chancing herself on a mattress on the bottom, chained to a wall in a watercolor dark storehouse. Sugar said no bone. Was indeed looking for Sheila. Speaking in a raspy tale, Sugar gasconaded that she was in control. Sugar had been holding on to her wrathfulness for times, merely that her friend had tricked her into plastic surgery and ducked the police into making Sugar pay for Sheila's crimes. Sugar blat that Sheila had ruined Sugar's life. Back in the present, Sheila stated that she would try to stop Sugar and cover Steffi and the children, but Sugar had been obsessed and determined to make Sheila pay. Sheila said Sugar had nearly gotten down with it. Cleric assured Sheila, who blubbed. In a flashback, Sugar said she had counted down the times, months, weeks, and days until she would get vengeance. She'd been consumed with it all the time she would spend in the loony caddy while Sheila had been free to live her life. Sheila replied that Sugar had been arrested for what she would done to Lauren's son. Sugar claimed it wouldn't have happened if it had not been for Sheila. As the flashback continued, Sheila asked what Sugar was planning. Sugar stated that she got to commit crimes looking like Sheila, and the first place she would strike was Steffi Forrester's house. Steffi's gone now be your first victim, Sugar decided. Sugar revealed her plan to make everyone suppose Sheila had killed the mama of her grandson, and Sugar said Sheila would be locked up ever. Still in the flashback, Sheila said Sugar looked like her but did not sound like her. Sugar cleared her throat and asked, How about now? Sheila was shocked to hear her voice expiring. From Sugar. Sheila supplicated Sugar to hurt Sheila rather of Steffi and those precious children. Sugar placed a robe and hood over her head, saying, Tonight, Steffi Forrester dies. Sugar added that Sheila would spend the rest of her life in captivity. The flashback continued. Sheila tripped Sugar and yanked on the chain around Sheila's ankle. Sugar demurred Sheila in the face, and Sheila screamed at Sugar not to hurt Steffi. Sugar left, and Sheila continued to scream. Sheila's desire to cover Steffi and the kitties left Finn emotional and speechless. Sheila said she loved them and Finn further than herself. Sheila asked if Finn was sure Steffi and Hayes were okay. Finn assured her that they were fine but decided that they'd talk about it more after they took care of Sheila, who'd gone through the unbelievable. Finn noted that Sheila had been brutalized, but her love for his woman. And Kitty showed. Sheila claimed that she would do anything to cover Finn, Steffi, and the children. I believe you, Mom, Finn replied, and they hugged. 
Downward, Liam unenthusiastically said it was great that the eatery had a table for all three of them. Belting wine, Steffi expressed surprise that Ivy had invited her to join them, she would allowed. Ivy wanted Liam all to herself. Ivy recalled the old byword that three was a crowd. Ivy asked if Steffi had missed her. Steffi claimed she had and said it was clear that Ivy had missed Liam. Steffi asked if it had been worth it to fly from Australia to plant one on Liam. Ivy explained that she would shown up to see another handsome man Steffi knew well Eric. Ivy remarked that Eric looked great and Steffi reposted that Ivy allowed. Liam did, too. Liam suggested they change the subject, but Ivy began to tell him that indeed though it had been a while and they'd changed over time, Liam was still the same beautiful man outside and out. She called him kind, minding, and sexy as hell. Steffi rolled her eyes and belted her wine. Ivy did not know why women were not beating down the door of the megacity's most eligible bachelorette, but she said she'd be if she lived there. Wow, Steffi muttered and chugged her drink. Stroking Liam's arm, Ivy considered that she might be too forward. You suppose? Steffi replied. Ivy did not know why she should hide her passions. She said she and Liam had changed and could be good for each other. Steffi decided that Liam was awful and he was all the effects, including Kelly's father. Steffi said she and Liam demanded to go see Kelly. Liam stammered. Guessing it was that time, Ivy said it had been good to see him. Liam replied that it had been good to see the beautiful Ivy. Ivy leaned in and kissed Liam. On that note, Steffi blazoned, standing up. Liam cut off the kiss, and Ivy instructed him to call her. As Liam stammered that he would, Steffi steered Ivy out with a series of, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. After Ivy had gone, Steffi remarked that slyness was not her kinsman's strong suit. Oh, neither is mine. Us forester women. You got to love it, Steffi said, screaming and belting wine. Liam took her wine glass from her and set it down. At the precipice house latterly, Steffi ended a call and said Becky would drop off Kelly, who was agitated to see Liam. Steffi thanked him for being a loving and attentive father and said she knew he was the same way with Beth. Liam joked that, between her and Ivy, his pride would pop. Steffi claimed that she was different because she was not making a play for him. Steffi asked if Liam wanted to see Ivy again. Liam flashed Steffi a look. Steffi remarked that she agreed with everything Ivy had said about him and he told her not to let Finn hear that. Liam asked if Finn would be worried that Liam was there, but she said Finn would be completely okay with Liam seeing Kelly. Liam noted that Steffi had zoned out. She commended that Finn had been reticent, and generally, just. Like that involved Sheila. Steffi was confident that it was not Sheila that time.